Okay, we didn't come on here to do that. So, real quick, you ever wonder what this was? Okay, so did you catch it? It was really quick. Let me show you again. It's actually a slight tap of the strings or the pickups or a combination of both. It's really just to keep time. It's really a, a, a combination of ghost notes and just keeping time and keeping rhythm. So you may see that and like, like what the heck is he doing? And don't mind the video, the bass was out of tune. It, they literally just handed it to me and picked it up and I had to start playing. Anyway, long story. I would never do that. Don't advise you to do that <laughs> at all. Make sure your bass is tuned. Anyway, so. One, two, three, four. It's usually happening on the four, on the downbeat of the four when I'm playing a groove like that. So it's just a part or a combination of ghost notes, like I said, just to be able to enhance the bass line, especially if I'm not playing with a drummer. So nine times out of 10, I'm not gonna play like that or hit that hard on the strings or on the bass if I have a drummer playing with me. That's kind of to just mimic the snare. I'm gonna do ka, do 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 ka, do go one, two, three, four. <laughs> Yeah, so I just think of that as a extra added ghost note, just in a rhythm keeping form. So if you want to practice that, I really wouldn't, I mean, it's really just to keep time. It's not necessarily a technique thing that you should add in, but you see a lot of bass players doing it. And I think it's more so just to keep time. I don't know if it really adds too much. If it adds to you, that's fine. And you want to add it to your routine, that's perfectly fine. So if it adds to you, you can go ahead and do that on the downbeat of two or on the downbeat of four. Do 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 right? Do do yep, do 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 It can be that simple. G uh A G A. Did I do it right? A G Yeah. A G A. A G A. Just something simple, start off like that, just you know, to get you know your feet wet inside of that technique. But it's really just tapping. Uh, you can really, it's, there's really no wrong way or right way to do this. It's like, I get this question a lot too, like what is that, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> it's really keeping time. I did that a lot when I would play with a drummer that wasn't that great or wasn't that good. Sorry for those drummers. Uh, but didn't really want to say, so I'm trying to keep time, right? And trying to, you know, be one with the rhythm section and actually hold down the section because I feel the drummer lacking in that area or slowing down or picking up too much. I'll do that to kind of keep pace or just to keep time, just kind of keep him on time or keep him on track or not just that, myself really too, especially if that drummer is not really listening or paying any attention, paying any attention to you or uh, it's just kind of in his own world. So it's kind of to keep me on track too because you don't want to be that bass player is like, okay, that rhythm section is out, like out of it. Like at least you're spot on if you have a stubborn, <laughs> stubborn drummer playing with you. Uh, anyway, it really is not too much to that technique. I just wanted to show you because I get that question a lot and I feel like, you know, I, I can show you guys and it's really nothing to it. It's really hitting any part of the pickups. You mainly want to pick, you want to hit over the pickups. It's more heard. And that's what I mean. It's not really a wrong or right way, but I usually do it over the pickups. You get more of a deeper sound. Um, you probably got, you're probably getting annoyed with that <laughs> sound in your, in your uh, coming out of your phone or whatever you're listening to this on. But it's usually hitting, you hear the more tire pitch tone when you hit it on the neck versus on the pickups, you get a deeper sound when you pick, when you hit down here. So it's just usually whatever fingers pl I'm playing with. I mean, it's not a right or wrong way to do it. You're hitting the string. Any string really works, right? 
preferably the ones that you're playing on or one that you're closest to. Sometimes both fingers or all fingers land on different strings. But it's really not a wrong, like I said, not a wrong way to do it. All fingers may land and hit the string. The first finger may hit the string. So just experiment with it. There's no right or wrong way. I, want, I don't want to tell you a right or a certain way, specific way to do this, but that's it. That's literally it. Take your time, start off with a small, short, simple little groove like that and try to implement it to your playing, especially when you're playing by yourself. It, it'll help you keep time. If you notice in a lot of the videos, if you follow me at all on, on Instagram, Derek's Bass Lessons, by the way, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I play a lot of this just raw, naked uh, covers, not me naked, but just <laughs> no music, no nothing, maybe a drum beat, maybe a maybe a track behind me, but sometimes I like to play without anything to see how well my time or my internal time or my internal clock is to be able to keep time. So you may see me You may see me do that, use that technique a lot when I'm not playing with a drummer or when it's just, just me, me and my bass guitar, right? So take it slow, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. With that one, with the hit, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure it's on the beat. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.